In this segment, we're going to talk about sheep and goat foot care. Hopefully, you don't end up with a lot of your animals with feet that look like the ones that are pictured here. But you may, and it's always good to know what to do if that happens. Before we really get into the nitty gritty of how to trim the hoof, we're going to talk about a few common hoof diseases of the sheep and goats. Um, one of the things is lameness should never be ignored. It could be a sign of several foot diseases or possibly a muscle injury. So anytime you got an animal that's limping around, you might want to pull them up, just get some hands on, take a look at what's going on. Uh, one of the things you may have going on with them is blue tongue. It's a non-contagious viral disease spread by biting insects. And how you can potentially tell that your animal has blue tongue is you may see a red to brown band around the coronet area. It's the area where the flesh meets the hoof wall. Um, it is a reportable disease. Uh, you may have some foot abscesses going on, and this is usually characterized by swelling of the soft tissues immediately above the hoof. In advanced cases, you may have a draining abscess in this area in between the toes. You may also see it on the bottom coming out of the foot pad. Abscesses are caused by bacterial infection of damaged foot tissue. Uh, Typically, front feet are more commonly affected. You can see it on the back feet, though. Uh, you may also get um, abscesses if you had some kind of foot injury in there. So it's always a good idea to take a look at their feet. Generally, only one foot is infected, but it is a good idea to check all the feet. And treatment is usually with antibacterial components. And next one is foot and mouth disease. This is highly contagious viral disease, and it does affect pigs, sheep, cattle, goats, and deer. It is endemic to many parts of the world. Uh, clinical signs uh, may include blisters, ulcerations on the mouth, snout, tongue, gums, teats, or around the top of the feet. Uh, usually in sheep and goats, it's much less of obvious than in cattle or pigs. Last reported case of foot mouth disease in the U.S. was 1929. The U.K. experienced a recent outbreak in 2001. Foot rot, it's one of the worst diseases in the sheep and goat industry and elsewhere. It will not cause death typically, but it may result in premature culling of the animals. Um, treatment costs can be substantial and it's caused by two anaerobic bacteria. Uh, warmth, mud, and poor sanitation provide per perfect environment for uh, the bacteria to grow and for the spread of foot rot. Uh, also, usually you'll find that you have the most incident of this when your temperature is between 40 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Foot scald is caused by bacteria. It is not contagious. It does cause lameness, typically on the front feet, and your lesions can be found between the hooves. Tissue between the toes will look blanched and white or red and swollen. It is much easier to treat than foot rot. And ensuring the sheep or goats have some place dry, now the mud will alleviate the problem. Uh, laminitis, which also known as founder, it's caused by inadequate blood flow in the hoof. This can be caused by digestive problems, typically, resulting in the excessive intake of grain, which is uh, grain overload or acidosis. Often the animals die before the feet become involved. Uh, recovered animals may exhibit unusual foot growth and or permanent lameness. Sore mouth. Um, can cause lameness, and it's a result of blisters appearing on the skin near the top of the hoof wall. Simultaneous blisters appear on the mouth and other part areas of the sheep and goat's body. The infection is more common around the mouth than on the legs or feet, but if you have a sheep with the signs of sore mouth, don't forget to check above their feet, just because it may be there. Uh, lesions can be treated with an ointment containing a broad spectrum antibiotic. There is also a vaccine available. 
And again, you see my note here, when developing a flock health program, consult with your veterinarian. Develop the relationship with the veterinarian. That is going to save you money and time in the long run. All right, so getting into the general area and aspect of health care. It's an important aspect of sheep and goat production. Um, you have a variety of diseases that can affect them. Um, most of them cause lameness and have a negative effect on product productivity. Just think about it. If they can't walk to go and graze, then they're not going to be able to put on weight or maintain weight, and it's going to affect their overall productivity. So it should be checked regularly for disease and excessive growth. Excessive growth can cause problems too. Um, ideally, you want to keep good records of treatments and trimmings done per individual. And if you have ones that you're always having to do something with, or they fail to respond to treatments, you want to probably add them to your cull list, as those animals are costing you time and money. Uh, hoof trimming. Um, basically, the hoof grows, it, their hoof wall grows, it's like our fingernails, they constantly grow, and so they need to be trimmed. If you have rocks and things like that out in their pastures, odds are they're naturally trimming their feet as they go out and graze. Still a good idea to bring them up, though, and check, as some will grow faster than others. Um, moisture content in the soil can affect hoof growth. Uh, usually if it's wet soil, and as that hoof grows, it'll tend to flare out, uh, which then once it dries out, can lead to cracking of the hooves. Uh, your management and nutrition play into this as far as well for hoof growth. Um, a good hoof pick, and same thing like what you use for cleaning out a horse's hoof uh, is Use for cleaning out the debris so you can see what's going on with the hoof. Then you can use uh, foot pairing shears for trimming the excess of hoof or small nippers, um, depending on how tough the hooves are at the time. A uh, paring knife can help you with trimming out little areas that maybe you couldn't quite get with the uh, uh, shears or the uh, nippers. Uh, trimming feet can be backbreaking work especially if you've got a lot of animals to do and you don't have something like a nice tilt table to put them on. Um, if you're just standing there and picking up their feet, you're bending over the whole time to do it. Tilt table can get them tilted over so the feet are right there basically at waist height and you can trim them without a lot of fighting and it makes it easier on you because you're not having to bend as much. Um, you can also use an elevated platform so that they're standing at a point where you don't have to bend down. Um, there's also cheap sheep shares that you can tip them into. I haven't found that to be particularly useful, and maybe it's just because I'm not used to it or found the right technique for it yet. Um, when you're trimming feet, you want to securely hold the leg of the sheep or goat, inspect the hoof, and remove any debris. Uh, if you smell a bad smell, that is a potential warning that you may have foot rot developing or developed. Uh, you want to get all the junk and crud out of the hoof using a hoof pick and then start trimming your hoof. You don't want to cut large chunks of hoof off all at once. You want to go in smaller chunks. If you find that you have pinkness, stop because it means you're getting close to the blood supply for the hoof. Um, you want to trim from the front to the heel to remove excess of growth of the horny part or the hard part of the hoof. And when done, the hoof should set flat on the ground and the hoof shouldn't look like it's leaning to one side or the other. You want a balanced hoof once you're done. Uh, you should have them standing in their natural position when you're done. Uh, they should be they sh will look generally flat on the bottom and have a boxy look to them. Again, it's always a good idea to put the foot down, step back, take a look at them, make sure that the hoof doesn't look off to the way the animal stands. Uh, as much as possible, avoid stressful times such as hot weather, late gestation when trimming hooves, just because trimming the hooves adds stress to them 
and those other items will add stress to them. So try not to stack stress on top of stress. Uh, and generally, it's a good idea to, to combine hoof trimming with other management tasks. So if you need to run them through, check to see if they're wormy, if you need to do some vaccinations or whatever. And usually whenever I run them through, I'm checking for worminess. Uh, if I, they need vaccination, I'll do the vaccinations. I'll trim their feet. Uh, and otherwise, combine several tasks all into one. Uh, there are foot baths that you can use uh, in the chute prior to arriving at the tilt table. One that helps clean out some of the gunk and it also helps make their feet not so hard because of, they've absorbed some moisture. So it's just like our fingernails. When they're dry, they're hard. When they're wet, they're a little bit softer and easier to trim. Same thing. And here's a few resources for you for trimming the hooves. Um, it's not a super hard task in and of itself. Usually the biggest thing is you're sitting there fighting the sheep and goats and some of them can fight. All right, for this task, we're going to be trimming the feet of the sheep as needed. And going through here and looking at his feet. Give me a little bit of a close-up view. You can see it probably needs a little bit just from standing. You can see a little bit of flare-out on this one. So the basic idea is you want to get them standing in your stanchion or working station and take a look at them as they're standing. Because when you trim the feet, you want to try to get it so that their feet keep them in a natural state. You don't want to trim them at a crazy angle. That'll mess up their state. Right now we're just taking a hoof pick, kind of cleaning out the debris and the dirt, and then you'll see where the hoof is kind of folded over, and that's partially because we don't have any rocks or anything in here for them to be able to wear their feet down naturally. We got the foot shears, you just kind of go in there, get up underneath, trim, trim the toe, and you'll see the pad as you're doing this. And as you trim out those curled over portions, you're probably going to have some more dirt in there. Just take a little foot, kind of clean them out. Biggest thing as you're doing this, don't take crazy big bites unless it's like that folded over piece that you know that you're not down close to the hoof pad or getting into what they call the quick, which is the area where the blood supply flows into the uh, hoof pad. trick on this whenever you're doing this when you flex their legs to be able to get access to the hoof try to flex it as close to natural as possible that way it's not putting undue stress on them and they're less likely to fight you
Biggest thing about trimming the feet, you want to be able to get in there and trim them, clean them out, because all that debris, when it gets wet, it can harbor bacteria, which can cause foot rot and foot scald. Ah! <laughs>